Let's bring in former Toys R Us CEO and Storch Advisors founder and CEO, Gerald Storch. Gerald, always great to see you um, and welcome. Let's first talk about what you think a rail strike would mean for shoppers as we head into the holiday season. It sounds like to me it would mean that um, supply chain issues would get worse, not better. Sure, it would be bad and it better not happen. And if it does happen, it better end fast. So first of all, it isn't that it's going to ruin Christmas in the sense that Christmas presents won't happen because all those are already in the store. It's way too late, 30 days to Christmas, for a retailers to be putting things on trains to think they're going to get on store shelves in time for Christmas purchase. So that's not going to affect your ability to get that toy for Johnny or the, or the great sweater you want to get for your wife. But a lot of products will be affected very rapidly, including food. So mm -hmm. it could affect your Christmas dinner. It won't affect your presence, but it could affect food very rapidly because so much food is carried by rail and so much of the, of the uh, feed for the animals is carried by rail as well. So that'd be a major impact, major impact on chemicals that go into things we use every day, a uh, major impact on the auto automobile industry. So it'd be very, very bad for supply chain, very bad for inflation, and just sort of, sort of reignite this fire in the supply chain that started with COVID. So the administration uh, put together a, a deal, a tentative deal, or they, they um, appointed a, a, a committee to put together a tentative deal. Let's, let's put it that way. The thing that is the uh, issue for uh, the rail workers, for the unions, is paid sick leave. It appears that the tentative deal did boost wages over the next five years or so, but it didn't address that paid sick leave issue. And what the unions and the rail workers are worried about is um, that a Republican House will not be um, friendly or understanding of, of its needs. And that's why there's a need for a strike or to make a bigger statement about this right now. So how do you think it shakes out? Look, I don't know. It's clear they haven't come to terms. That much is clear. They were able to kick it you know, down the road to get past the election. But and it looks like now they'll kick, back, kick it past the uh, Georgia runoff. But that's the end of the line, so to say. So they're going to have to come to some agreement on this. If not, they'll strike. You know, the, the Congress can intervene in a rail strike. It's not the kind of thing anyone wants. I don't think anyone, anyone can allow this to go on very long. So I think one or the other, it's not going to keep going. So I don't really think the worst case scenario will unfold here, but we might get right to the edge of the cliff before people, uh, uh, you know, wise up and say this is this is bad for all sides. Yeah, and we were talking to Stu Leonard Jr. Uh, about um, higher food prices across the board and how it's impacting meals that are uh, hitting the Thanksgiving table. And he said, well, prices didn't just rise, you know, overnight. And, and I said, that's true. It's for a basket of goods. Um, and Gerald, you know, we haven't seen those prices fall. That's the issue. We're looking at that CPI number. The market gets excited that it's come down just a little bit. Um, certain areas of the supply chain have seen a drop, but where people need it most, food and gas, um, they're still struggling. Look, I, I don't think inflation is coming down to the level that the Fed wants anytime soon. That's the, that's the reality of what's going on. There's still incredible upward price pressure, not the least of which is because despite all the layoffs we read about, the unemployment rate remains low and the availability of labor is very bad. So the only way to get more people in your early need is going to be to pay more. And there's going to have this wage pressure on top of supply chain pressure, on top of all the money that's out, on top of everything that's driven the inflation that we've seen. So I don't think it's going away any, any way soon, anytime soon. And at the end of the day, when consumers are pressed like that, they spend on necessities like food. There was a headline in one major paper this morning that I had to laugh at. It said, Americans aren't letting inflation interrupt their Thanksgiving. Mm. Well, of course they're not. They're going to buy the turkey and have Thanksgiving. My gosh. Right. That's going to happen. But they're going to spend more money on that. And they won't have it for other things. So we're going to see that in the rest of the economy. It's like a snake swallowing a rabbit when it bulges out and destroys apparel shopping for holidays, you know, clothing shopping, when it hurts electronic sales, when it hurts other discretionary purchases, when the consumer has to buy it, pay for for the for the holiday turkey. Yeah, that's a great point. And anecdotally, I talked to a lot of people, um, you know, who are not uh, scrimping on food and gas to get where they need to go for work or whatever or travel, um, but do say they've you know held back on th those discretionary purchases, and that's what they're starting to um, they're starting to think about. And you sort of wait to see what the tipping point is when you start to see companies reporting lower earnings and, and that kind of thing. We already see some of these layoffs happening too, so it's a lot to watch. Gerald Storch, we thank you so much for your insight. My pleasure.